Welcome, um, Minister Tudor Olianowski. Um, you're now the Minister of Foreign Affairs and European Integration of the Republic of Moldova. Um, you were appointed to this role in January, so first to begin, I'd like to congratulate you. Um, you previously served as your country's ambassador to Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and the United Nations here in Geneva. Um, latterly, you also served as president of the Trade and Development Board, um, which is the governing body of the UN Conference um, on Trade and Development, UNCTAD. Could you explain what that role entailed? Absolutely. It's good to be back uh, to International Geneva and it's good to be back uh, uh, at UNCTAD as well. Indeed, uh, I have been appointed in January, but I still have a mentality of an ambassador of Moldova to the UN. And I think this is very important for any minister in the world to have this uh, view or perspective, not only from exclusively from, from the national priority perspective, but also to have in mind the larger goals, the larger uh, the UN reform agenda, the larger SDG uh, pro. Um, process and programs. And I think this is something that I would like to also to convey to my distinguished colleagues as ministers, but also as former colleagues ambassadors. Indeed, uh, this is not uh, easy to to juggle, as we say, with the minister position and also with the president of the Trade and Development Board of UNCTAD. But I do think this is a unique opportunity at the same time to send the right messages with the right political will and right political leverage from a ministerial position. So this can better resonate with the uh, with the international community at the same time and also will drive processes faster and focused on outcomes. As um, as still a president of the Trade and Development Board, I am a strong believer of uh, UNCTAD, especially in uh, in this world today. Uh, it's important for UNCTAD to be uh, to be great again, as I say, and I think that it's a first of all a member-driven organization. And as president of the TDB uh, of UNCTAD, I think, and I'm encouraging all the time the member states to be as active as possible. At the same time, I would like to acknowledge the full support that I receive uh, from the secretariat, uh, which is extremely important and useful for my presidency, and uh, also from the Moldovan mission team here in Geneva. Uh, just to say very quick uh, words of gratitude uh, to the leadership of UNCTAD, I have still a good, direct, uh, permanent dialogue with uh, SG Kitui and also with uh, DSG Durand. Uh, and I'm encouraged to see their commitment to the organization and to the, uh, to the work that UNCTAD has done, is doing and will be doing. Thank you very much. Um, Let's take a look now at the, the national perspective. Um, perhaps you could give me an assessment of how important UNCTAD's work is to the Republic of Moldova, um, both in terms of national and foreign policy priorities. Well, first of all, I think that uh, it is important uh, to see UNCTAD as a conference, as you have mentioned, as a conference for trade and development. This is a venue where the best expertise uh, and the best summaries and recommendations can and are provided at this point on, on various topics such as investment, financing, technology, e-commerce. This is something that uh, is extremely useful for a government, for a nation to, to follow and to grasp and uh, to be focused on these particular recommendations that UNCTAD experts from various dimensions are offering on one hand. On the other hand, uh, to be uh, more concrete, uh, I would like to mention, for example, the uh, important uh, activity of UNCTAD in the uh, fight against uh, poverty and mm. promotion of economic growth, SDG 1 and SDG 8 uh, of the 2030 uh, development agenda. Uh, and from this particular perspective, UNCTAD has been uh, doing uh, various um, surveys, analysis of uh, various aspects of Moldova's economy and uh, particularly producing uh, policy recommendations. And uh, just to make a connection to, to other organizations, we have the World Trade Organization, and the Republic of Moldova is a member of it. I was also ambassador to the WTO. And Moldova has ratified the trade uh, uh, and facilita facilitation agreement. And I think that, uh, and we have ratified the TFA, 
And in the government program, the implementation of the TFA relates mostly or 75% to the Customs Department of the Republic of Moldova and to the Ministry of Economy and Infrastructure. Here is where UNCTAD has already been active in the Republic of Moldova, particularly on the Customs uh, Department activity by the uh, development and implementing the ASICUDA uh, system. ASICUDA is the uh, online electronic electronic uh, uh, registration of customs uh, uh, information, the uh, system that ensures interoperability of exchanging of fast and online rapid exchange of information. And also this is a very good, uh, in my opinion, Moldova can be seen as a success story. I'm humble, but still it's a success story because we have managed on one hand to um, reduce barriers to trade, number two, to process uh, faster the the big line of uh, of cars at the at the customs at the yeah. border crossing of the Republic of Moldova and uh, number three it helped us to have more money in the national budget because this systems uh, system allows for a more transparent declaration of goods so I think that uh, from my perspective now as a minister of uh, foreign affairs I see clearly from inside at the national perspective uh, not only uh, not only theoretical uh, advantage of working with UNCTAD expertise in various topics, but also de facto practical uh, change, positive change that uh, UNCTAD is bringing on the ground based on the evidence-based evidence, uh, uh, evidence -based studies and coming with policy recommendations. So this is something from the national point of view uh, extremely useful as a message but also as a change of a reality to a better future for Moldovans. Thank you, thank you. Um, your term as president of the Trade and Development Board is, is wrapping up this year. Uh, I'm interested to know what personal memories or special experiences you, you will be able to take forward from that role into your, your, your new role as foreign minister. Well, I think many lessons uh, can be learned, and I think I learned my share of lessons uh, trying to find a compromise between all of the member states of UNCTAD, which uh, some people say is a mission impossible. I am still an optimist, and I think it's a mission possible. Uh, so the uh, finding consensus and having a, a forward-looking and open mind to listening to those who are in the same room that you are. Uh, and in my role as the president of the Trade and Development Board, I was trying to steer some discussions, sometimes diplomatically, sometimes perhaps less diplomatically, but with a view to reaching some conclusions. Because even in the government, uh, when you have discussions with various uh, counterparts, uh, be it state or civil society uh, colleagues, uh, it's important to for a government official to listen better. Because when you listen, you understand, and then you engage, and then you change. And then you develop and you move uh, forward. So I think this is important for me uh, to have this experience at UNCTAD uh, on a consensus-based or consensus-building process. Uh, because no one should be left behind, if I can, uh, I can use this, uh, the, this, uh, this phrase. This is not just a, a simple phrase, but this is really important to have an inclusive uh, approach and to focus that the interests of all of the stakeholders at the round table to be taken into consideration. Because if we don't take into consideration one position or the other position, in the medium or long term it will backfire. So it's important to move perhaps slower, but in the right direction. And I do think that UNCTAD at this point uh, in time uh, is going in the right direction. And the uh, Trade and Development Board is helping all of the members to bring their recommendations, their positions on the board, and to all of us mo move in the right directions. So lessons learned, number one, listen to others. Number two, try to be build consensus. And number three, don't lose focus. Because sometimes we, we focus too much on progress or process rather than outcome. So always it's important to have a clear outcome, not a general one, because the better and the clearer the result that you expect, the better the process that you can achieve. Thank you, thank you. Um, you've addressed some of the areas of UNCTAD's work already from your national perspective and also in terms of process um, as president of, of the Trade and Development Board. Um, 
during the period of your presidency, which began last year, um, perhaps you could say overall what's your assessment of, of UNCTAD's work, um, concrete programs, but also the general direction of the organization? Well, I think uh, a lot has been done and much more needs still to be done. Uh, also, following the mandates from the Nairobi Mafikiano, uh, following the, uh, the 2030 development agenda, but also the Addis Ababa action plan and action agenda, it is extremely important to understand the mandate that uh, UNCTAD has. And UNCTAD has a clear mandate uh, to come up with policy recommendations on such crucial topics as financing for development and uh, investment, infrastructure, digital economy and e-commerce. And here I would like to mention some positive, realistic uh, changes with a great potential in my opinion. All the member states have agreed and we have established two intergovernmental uh, group of experts. First is on uh, digital economy and e-commerce and the second is on financing for development. On digital economy and e-commerce this is a topic that uh, it's a reality already e-commerce is happening at the same time in other venues in other organizations we do not see uh, member states or all the members engaging in this there are some uh, colleagues that are reluctant to engage because they are bound by certain rules or bound by the uh, lack of mandate perhaps a national mandate whereas here in Anktar is a conference and all of the members that are reluctant to speak on e-commerce in other agencies, here in UNCTAD, they open up and they say, indeed, this is a topic of interest. This is something that we would like to pursue and to discuss. So that's why I have high hopes of the activity of the so-called IGE, Intergovernmental Group of Experts for Digital Economy and, uh, and e-commerce. The second IGE is on financing for development, and I think that the FFD, the Financing for Development, is a topic that UNCTAD has a clear role, and is uh, this role also needs to be taken into consideration in the relationship between Geneva and New York, and uh, uh, UNCTAD in my opinion, has a great potential and it needs to be more present in New York uh, with uh, the work with, with ECOSOC and with the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, with DESA and with, with, with other, uh, other uh, colleagues and also with the UN leadership. Uh, to better feed in the work that UNCTAD is doing to the entire UN reform agenda. Uh, on the financing for development. The mandate is, is there. We have the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. And, and in my opinion, also the colleagues, the distinguished colleagues from New York uh, should also take into consideration and uh, have a large a number of visits to Geneva events and to participate and to have sit on the same table and to share opinions with a view to see where and each of us can be complementary. This is extremely important because let's be very clear, uh, the current level of, uh, if I can say, a transatlantic, transatlantic uh, Geneva, New York uh, relationship has a, a vast potential that has not yet been fully capitalized. And this is something as a minister uh, uh, in a country of a member uh, of, of UNCTAD and of the UN, of course, uh, for me it's important that when I come to Geneva and when I come to New York, I hear the same position. I see that there is a good synergy and there is a good joint understanding of the fact that all of us, regardless Geneva or uh, New York, are moving in the same direction. It has to be an inclusive process. And I do believe that uh, the uh, Trade and Development Board and the fact that uh, during my presidency we have decided and agreed with the member states to transfer the executive session of the Trade and Development Board from September to, uh, to June is extremely important, not only calendaristically by date, but also important because having the executive session of TDB in June, where I also hope that we'll have more presence from New York at the TDB session in June, will allow us to have outcome documents, summaries of the conversations of the distinguished members from the uh, TDB in, uh, in Geneva, to present them on time and earlier uh, than the processes that are occurring in, in New York. And this will be very important that TDB and UNCTAD will have a better 
feed-in process to the entire uh, financing for development and uh, the 2030 sustainable development agenda. And I think that all of us are ha having the same purpose. Let's go there together and I'll also look uh, forward for my upcoming uh, trip to New York in, in April. Also, I think the, the work of the second committee is extremely important and I look forward for the presentation uh, of the work of the Trade and Development Board um, uh, to the second committee of, of the General Assembly and also meeting with the uh, leadership of uh, United Nations uh, because this is our common responsibility and our common task to fulfill, to deliver and also Returning to the initial question uh, of uh, my position, my unique position as the President of Trade and Development Board and Minister, uh, I think that all of us and UNCTAD can use this advantage, historical advantage, and I'm willing to deliver to the maximum of my abilities that UNCTAD is heard and we can all can make UNCTAD great again. Thank you. Um, You've mentioned the Addis Ababa Action Agenda and within the context of the, the wider 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We're here in the SDG studio, so of course SDG as in Sustainable yeah. Development Goals, a package of 17 goals <coughs> adopted by UN member states in 2015. Um, these are a list of objectives that address many of the globe's um, steep social, economic and environmental challenges. How do you see UNCTAD's work in specifically assisting member states in, in achieving those 17 goals? Absolutely. I think that, uh, first of all, it's hap I'm happy to be here at the SDG studio in Geneva and uh, to reiterate the Republic of Moldova's full commitment to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and also to uh, focus on all of the SDGs. And here I think that UNCTAD has a competitive advantage with relationship to other uh, organizations, to agencies, because UNCTAD is a cross-cutting. UNCTAD's work relates to every sustainable development goal. And here is where the member states should also be more proactive, asking for UNCTAD to examine or to analyze uh, the how one or another member is implementing or what is the status currently, for example, with the topic of, uh, of poverty reduction. This perhaps is a very general uh, goal, but it's a very concrete if you have an evidence-based uh, study. And here is where I think UNCTAD uh, can be beneficial not only to one ministry, if you speak of a country, Ministry of Agriculture or Ministry of Economy, but also with the Ministry of IT, Ministry of, uh, of, of, of Sustainable Development, of Transport, of Agriculture. And this is where I think that UNCTAD uh, has a big potential to deliver. And here is also I encourage other uh, or the governments or mark my counterparts in other countries to be more proactive and to try to ask for UNCTAD to, um, to see where they are in the process of implementation of SDGs and where they would like to get to be to fully implement them on one hand. On the second hand, if we focus on, focus on SDGs 1 and 8 on uh, uh, poverty reduction and ensuring a sustainable economic growth, I think this is extremely important uh, for UNCTAD to deliver a message to the, to the globe, to the world, that... Uh, especially having in mind that uh, there is an increased rhetoric, uh, anti-globalization or anti-trade liberalization. Uh, this is a negative trend that perhaps is due to the lack of proper information, proper raising awareness about the benefits of liberalizing trade. And I think that UNCTAD can be this non-controversial uh, policy recommendation, a conference that will provide the entire picture will open all the cards and the advantages. And here uh, we'll be able, UNCTAD will be able to steer the entire process of moving us closer to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. Being fully realistic, I understand the shortcomings, the challenges, the provocations, if I can say. But I think that it's important for UNCTAD to be there. And today, as never before, UNCTAD's role is extremely important to to be active, to be proactive, and uh, UNCTAD has a clear role in the UN system, but also uh, in relationship with the uh, national governments. 
Thank you very much, Minister, for taking time out of your busy schedule here in Geneva to speak to us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's been a pleasure. I hope to be back again. Thank, Thank you. you.